Hey, Laurie and Laud, is that you? Are you all here? Oh. Hi, Pastor Meredith. Yeah, we're just here watching dishes. Yeah, me too. It's like there's always dishes at my house to be washed. And I was just trying to take a couple of minutes. It's my day to wash dishes at the house. And it's like everybody's here and everybody's been eating. It's crazy. I kind of feel like it's always a lot nice day to do dishes. But oh, well. Oh, well, that's okay. Washing dishes is a good thing to be doing today because we're going to be talking about baptism and that's right. And having water and all kinds of things like that. Yeah, I'm going to rinse. Mm -hmm. I shouldn't just be letting the water run. Well, everyone, welcome to Celebrate Wonder. I'm Reverend Meredith Brown, our lead pastor at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church, here at my kitchen sink with my sponge and my scrubby brush. And this is Laud the Lamb with Miss Laurie, our awesome uh, director of children and youth ministries. And we're so glad that you're here for Celebrate Wonder. It's like, I don't know, week six. It's just incredible. Yeah. And we are so excited that you're here. If you want to be a part of Celebrate Wonder and you haven't gotten one of our packets, well, this weekend you can pick up a new one. We're going to have more information about that. But we love to be able to um, have this time with you on Wednesday evenings at 6.30. And um, I think I'm ready to dry my hands and maybe go find my wonder table. What about you, Miss Laurie? I think I'm ready too. Wad, how about you? He's just ready to quit doing dishes. So, yeah. See you in a few minutes. See you soon. Hello, everybody, and welcome to week six of Celebrate Wonder. This is Laud, and he is so excited. We're going to continue today talking about baptism. But before we do that, we need to light our candle. Mm -hmm. We're going to light the candle, not the lamb. I can do this with my left hand. Okay. We can't forget to put up our faith word, which is still this week include, including everyone. How are you, Pastor Meredith? I'm good. I'm so glad that include is still our word, that we're including all of God's children in God's love. I think that's exciting. I agree. Well, and it also makes me think about our Bible story for today. So we hope that everyone will read that out of their Bibles. And today in Celebrate Wonder, it is from Matthew chapter 3, verses 3 through 17. And it's the wonderful story from Matthew of Jesus's baptism. Now, when you read it from the Bible, you'll see that it starts not with just Jesus showing up to see his cousin, John the Baptist, to get baptized by the River Jordan, but it starts with all kinds of people who've been coming out to see John, to be baptized, to uh, repent of their sins, to say they're sorry, and to accept God's love for themselves and to turn their lives around. And so all the people are coming out and they're being included in that baptism that John is doing. And then we see how Jesus comes, comes out also, just like everybody else has been coming out to see John, Jesus comes out to see John and he is baptized. And remember, baptism uses water. I've got my water right here. Like we were washing dishes earlier mm -hmm. and um, it uses water to help us remember that we're just washed clean in our baptism. And Jesus has the same thing. And when he comes up out of the water, the voice of God is heard saying, this is my beloved son with whom I am so well pleased. I'm so happy with him. So this helps us to remember that Jesus, not only that God, not only loved Jesus and was so happy with him, that we're included in that too, as people who love and follow Jesus, that God loves us so much, whether we're baptized or not, and that we are included as well in uh, God being pleased with us, which is, I think, a really nice part of the story. Well, I have a question for, for you guys to think about, and I hope that you'll use your packets and you'll ask these questions too at home together. But how do you imagine John the Baptist, who was out there baptizing, what do you think his face looked like when Jesus said, hey, John, will you baptize me? What do you think John's face looked like? 
<laughs> That's a good one. Surprise. Me? <laughs> or, yeah. What about you all out there at home? Why don't you make a face? What do you think John looked like? <laughs> nice. And one of the other things we learn from our Bible story is that the voice of God is heard. Isn't that interesting? It's, the, um, it's just a wonderful part of that story. What do you think God's voice sounds like? Hmm. Do you think God's voice sounds like this? Might. <laughs> what about you, Laurie? What's a fun voice you think God's voice might sound like? Maybe um, Morgan Freeman. <laughs> well, Evan Almighty and, and uh, uh, what's the other one? Bruce Almighty. Bruce Almighty. Thank you. Maybe like Morgan Freeman. I wonder. Yeah, every time, like, I think about that. That's, I think, because of those movies, I think of Morgan Freeman. I wonder sometimes if the voice of God sounds like the wind because it's like the Holy Spirit. And sometimes we talk about the Holy Spirit being like a wind that blows through. If God's voice sounds like the wind. I don't know. Hard to tell. Well, we hope that you'll ask those questions with your family and whoever's in your household that you're talking with, that you'll use your wonder cube and roll for some questions as well. But as we uh, go into watching our Bible story for today, why don't we have our prayer together? And why don't you say a line after me? Is that good? Mm hmm Okay. Dear God. Dear God. Help me to show your love. Help me to show your love. And to include everyone. And to include everyone. Amen. Amen. Okay, we're going we're gonna to work on including everyone just like God includes us. And let's watch our Bible story now. See you back here in a few minutes. Hey everyone, it's Carly. Did you know that Jesus got baptized? When Jesus decided to get baptized, he went to the Jordan River where John the baptizer was baptizing a bunch of people. Jesus waited in line with everyone else. And when it was Jesus' turn, John was so surprised. He knew that Jesus was special, and he wondered why Jesus would want to be baptized by him. The scripture tells us that John baptizes Jesus, and a dove comes to remind Jesus that God is happy with him. This story is the beginning of Jesus' ministry. I love that the beginning of Jesus' ministry was about him being with a community. The group probably had carpenters, teachers, and all types of different people in it. By being baptized, Jesus makes it clear that he was part of the community. We too are part of a community. Sometimes, when we think about doing things for God, we might think we have to do something that stands out or to do it alone. But Jesus taught us that being part of a community means making sure everyone is included. In my school, we have athletes, artists, musicians, people who are good at math, and people who are good at crafts. All of us are needed to make our school community work. When our team has a game, the band plays music to keep their spirits up. When we have arts and crafts show at school, the math club students help by taking payments and counting the money. We all work together and use our gifts to help the community. By being baptized, Jesus shows us how important it is to be included in a community. And we honor his example by sharing our gifts with one another. Now, it's your turn to wonder. Hi, everybody. It is time for our craft portion. Now, we talked a little bit last weekend during small talk about remembering your baptism. I don't remember mine. I was either six months or a year old. I could go ask my mom right now. But anyway, six months, a year old, when I was baptized. So I don't remember it, but I know what she's told me. And we've talked about it, which is kind of fun. And the grown-ups enjoy talking about it too because they like those memories. Here's the other fun fact. I was baptized at 
Douglas, Douglas Avenue, where we go to church in person many years ago. So I had already started my drawing, which is what we're doing this week. He has some colored pencils, some crayons, and you could cut pictures out of magazines and glue them. You can do it however you want. But pictures about your baptism. So I've drawn pictures of my mom and me and my dad and my brother. He was there too because he was a lot older than I am. He was already 13. And we have the baptismal font that we have at our church, right? And some churches have that. Some churches have other things that they use, but it all involves water. And the pastor. I kind of tried to put a robe on the pastor. I'm not the best artist, but you get the idea. And it was fun for me to sit and remember my baptism. Your baptism probably happened in church, may have happened at Douglas, it might have happened in a different place. But let us know But mine was at Douglas, just like a lot of yours were. Thanks guys. Okay, adults, it's time for your spiritual practice for this week. And of course, as we've been talking about Jesus's baptism, I hope that you've been remembering your baptism or thinking about baptisms you've witnessed. You know, if you would like to be baptized and have not, feel free to get in touch with me, Reverend Brown at Douglas Avenue United Methodist Church. I'd love to talk with you about that. But um, one of the things that I want you to think about this week are, is what are the roles that you play in your relationships? Are you the leader, the listener, the comic relief? What are all those different ways that you are with people? Because, you know, we all have roles to play and we all have gifts. And baptism is a way that we show and remember that we are so gifted by God and so loved and that God honors our gifts and use our gifts. So this week, I'd like for you, adults is special, if you want to get a bowl of water and dip your hand into the water and drip the water off your fingers and remember as you feel the water leave your fingers that you have gifts. And you can say this prayer if you want to. It's right in your a packet of material if you'd like to. With every drop of water, I remember your love. With the gifts I have been given, I will share your love. And with your happiness, I will be an example of love. Amen. And I would encourage you every time you're with water this week, whether you're washing dishes, you're in the shower, maybe you're helping to um, bathe one of those kiddos, when you feel that water, remember with every drop of water, I remember God's love. With every drop of water, I remember God's love. Have a wonderful week, grown-ups. Thanks. Welcome back to the Wonder Table, everyone, as we come to the end of our time together. You can see that Miss Laurie and Laud and I have bowls of water. So we hope that uh, at some point this week that you'll use your resource and get a bowl of water out and do this spiritual practice together with your household. You know, water is an important symbol of baptism. Um, and whether we've been baptized or not, we're all still connected through baptism because baptism is something that we do, especially with our church community, with our church family. It's not something we do on our own. It's something that connects us together in faith with our church family, um, which I think is just really neat, particularly right now where we're um, having to spend a whole lot more time at home and we're not able to be uh, together face to face. We're still connected together in our baptism. So one of the things to think about this week and talk in your household about is why do you think we use water during baptism? Miss Laurie, why do you think we use water during baptism? I think it shows us it's like a new beginning, washes things away. It's kind of like a cleaning. Like a cleaning, yeah, for <laughs> sure. Cleaning dishes, cleaning ourselves. Absolutely. Well, and water has lots of meanings, doesn't it? Water, um, when we use water, 
we remember that, you know, when we're born, when we're physically born, there's a lot of water involved. We talk about when we're born, we come through the waters of birth and it helps us remember that too, that when baptism is a time when we're made new and anytime we remember our baptism, we're made new in that. What do you think, Laud? Oh, he's drinking water right now. Mm -hmm. Excellent. Oh, and there's Oreo. Oreo wants a drink too. Yeah, we have to have water to drink every day, don't we? To live. It's very important. Mm -hmm. I hope their water dishes aren't empty. Oh, maybe Oreo's water dish is empty. I don't know. Well, we invite you this week to get some water with your household and to put your hand into the water or your nose, depending on who you are. And lift your fingers up and watch the water drip off. And to remember, you are a child of God. You can even touch the water to your head to remember. As you're doing that, you can say, uh, whoever's in your household, say their name, like, Laud, you are a child of God. I find happiness in you. And Miss Laurie, you are a child of God. I find happiness in you. Yeah, you're saying it too in your own way. <laughs> he says you're a child of God and happiness in you. Thank you. And yeah. everybody, all of our Celebrate Wonder, you are a child of God. And we find happiness in you. We love you. We're so glad we're connected in baptism. Yay. You know, I can't believe it's already been six weeks. We have our celebration chart here. We're still celebrating lots of different kind of Christmassy things that could be all year round. Mm-hmm. You can share good news anytime. We need a lot of that right now. You can act on your faith and sing a happy song. Well, and I sang a happy song in the shower last weekend. Yeah. You can do all of these things. Just remember, make those check marks. You can even make a game of it. But we have our next kit to pick up. Can you believe it, Pastor Meredith? I'm so excited for our next Celebrate Winter kit. Our next kit. And this is really exciting. When you pick up your kit, your goodie this time, you've probably heard of these, are these hot chocolate bombs. You know, you put it in the mug, you pour the hot milk over top of it, and poof, hot chocolate. Oh my goodness. It's like a baptism in warm milk and chocolate. It is. So for those of you that come to the church on Saturday or Sunday, Pastor Meredith, you're going to have to help me with the times. Okay. This Saturday, which is January 16th from 10 to noon, you can pick up your Celebrate Wonder Kits and your goodie hot chocolate bomb, as well as a star word, if you wanna pick up one of those. And then again, also on Sunday, January 17th, from one to three, same thing. Just come to the back parking lot of Douglas Avenue, wear your mask, and you can get your new Celebrate Wonder Kit, get a star word if you want to, and get your wonderful hot chocolate bomb treat. I'm so excited. So is Laud. We can't wait to see you. So uh, we hope to see you this weekend. Know that we love you and we love to celebrate wonder with you. And we can't wait to see you this weekend. And we can't wait to see you next week too. Yes, and Luna wanted to say bye too. <laughs> bye everybody. We'll see you this weekend and see you next week. Oh, one more thing everybody before we go. I forgot to say, make sure you stick around and watch your singing. We have our music video next, the song welcome. Okay. See you later. Bye. There's nothing common about your grace. The way you grow such beauty from the dirt 
doesn't matter the time or place you're right here with us even when we hurt cause you we bust together like the season good news Blessed.